I saw the guests. Too much fun. Tiff and uh, at Midnight Madness, and it was they're just it was fucking awesome. Like I know I was I was secretly I wanted to get in Fantasia, and we did, but then we got pulled because of Tiff. But I never thought back could you get into Tiff. Never, not in a million years. My goal was Fantasia. Um, so when we got pulled and then we got into TIFF and we were in Midnight Madness, because I, I don't think it's a Midnight Madness film really, but I know it'd be like a, come on, and then when the bear attack happens, I, I know it would have satisfied that. Group. Are you into horror movies? Yeah. Because I, I look at that Big and time. it's not a quintessential midnight movie, no. but it kind of has to be at the same time. Well, it's, I think it's interesting because my goal was to make it also like a blue valentine in the woods too. But I'm a huge fan of thrillers and horror. It's huge. Are you a bear expert now? Uh, like, what happens if no, you go out with a bear? I mean, unless unless I'm around bears and can, and can work with them and know them and all that stuff, uh, no, I'm not a bear expert. But I do know, after all that research, quite quite a bit. So, like, so if test you, me. If you went out into the woods right now and had yeah. to like pack your bag full of supplies, yeah. what would be in it? Because like, there's that part in the movie where she starts pulling out this crazy. I stuff. would have a little saw for sure that would be able to, like a little hatchet or a sauce right away, so I can, you know, cut the trees or get some kidney or whatever if I have to. I would get those starter sticks that's so easy to start a fire, even if it's a bit wet or something. It's like, it simulates kidney. Can, I can't speak today. You know, they're gonna watch this when the guy can't even speak. And uh, then I'll put a disclaimer, bad cup of coffee. Bad cup of coffee. Uh, uh, is it kindling? It's kindling, isn't it? Oh, I'm it's not a, kid, a big like, outdoorsy person. Like a kid. Anyway, uh, it simulates that. I would need that. Definitely drops for the water. Get those two drops and you mix it. And you can, See, I learned that gallon. from Wild. Have you seen Wild? No, I haven't. She puts the drops in the water. So yeah. now I know if I go on a hike, oh. I need drops in the water. Um, oh, awesome. Um, yeah, I, uh, that, no, no, it's like an A, B system. You put like two drops of one on one of the other. And you mix it in a cap, you wait till it turns like blue or something, you pour it in like a gallon of water and it purifies the water. I bring those because you don't want to lug water around. That's why Alex, like, some reviewer, I think, mentioned, like, like where's the bunch bring more water? It's like, well, you can't. You're going to lug around, like, water or bring a gun? You can't, you can't walk around with a gun in, in Canada. You can't. You have to have a license, it's got to be in season. It's just so many restrictions. Like, you can't just walk around with a gun. You gotta show up in the in the provincial park with a gun. You're gonna get arrested. So there's those limitations. I'd bring bear spray, and I would bring a thermal blanket in case it's, if it's cold, especially in those like the early the spring or the fall. Um, more uh, okay. Um, and uh, I would definitely bring uh, a little stove, but it's it's like a little it's a really little you attach like. It's like a three prong thing, and it's a little like um, oven, like an oven. We're talking about. It's like a little. It's a sign language. Just learned this today. This means fire. I can't tell if it's ridiculous that the only reason I can picture what you're talking about is because of the movie Wild. Yeah, Otherwise, I'd have no clue. But it's like yeah, I don't know. It's like a little. Oh God, I'm so tired. Um, they sell them at all the camping stores. You know, I get to have a Swiss Army knife because I did go camping, and it's, it's, I'm going over like what I brought. And those and those uh, shrink wrapped uh, dried meals that you just warm up with hot water. They sound delicious. Coffee, good coffee. Um, and yeah, but like for survival, the thing is, because yeah, you can't have a gun, but if you have a bear bear spray, that should be enough. And I go with a group. I when people go alone in the backcountry and completely alone, uh, I respect that because I find it's scary. And because all horror movies start that way. Well, he, but yeah, and like, I don't know, like I think it's, I, I couldn't have made backcountry if I wasn't afraid of the wild. Do you know what I mean? Like that's, those are my fears, too. Most people should be afraid of stuff like, like I, that. I, you know, I remember... A place where you have no control like that. Yeah. How about working with the real bear? What was session one like with the bear trainer was there any kind of do's and don'ts that you then had to adjust your shooting schedule around um not i'd have to adjust any of this shooting schedule around i mean we, i was working with her uh um i just dana dubay for like months prior like i made a little cat video to show her with a little red tent to show her um 
they're just bear shots, you know, she wants to see what the bears would have to do. So like one would have to like lay down over the tents out there, get up, walk towards it, one would have to be in the tent on the body. So the, there were two of them and they were trained, you know, to like do different things and um, specific things. Did you just call that a tent video? Or a cat video. It's a cat video. Like she wanted a storyboard, she, like a uh, storyboard. Yeah. Yeah, and I was like, I'll do one better. I'll I'll I'll, I'll put together uh, a little cat video showing you the shots. Um, I can show it to you. So she got, she got, she got a good, you know, um, good idea of what I wanted to do. I kind of want to see a whole version of this movie that just takes place with cats. Yeah, we were close, <laughs> and we were talking about a, a panda bear, and it didn't, that didn't work out. And we talked, a koala was on the list for a while. Like you so, know, the crow. The so crow I guess there's going across. to be backcountry sequels then. Yeah, we had the crow they come, came across. I really wanted an ostrich. And everybody told me that they'd see it. I'm like, no, they wouldn't. Big ostrich, how about an emu? And the, they're, every, everybody talked me out of the ostrich idea. And then the koala bear, it'd be great. Like, you, like, you open it and it's just like, just comes and like, just, just like, rah, just like a koala bear. I don't know. I would watch these movies. Uh, absolutely. Well, that was never on the agenda, but we laughed about it sometimes. We needed to, like it was such an intense film to make that yeah. Missy and I would laugh our asses off on some things. How that, is it for you doing this more. as an actor who is now directing? Because it's not like a campy slasher flick, and actually, no. even campy slasher flicks, when someone's pretending to be hurt, I imagine it must be incredibly draining. So, how is it dealing with? kind of respecting how stressful it might be to have someone running screaming through the woods for extended periods of time. It being an I could not have done it without being an actor for sure. Like nearly twenty years experience, you know, or seventeen or something and knowing what it's like to be in front of the camera, to be in the arena like that. So I understand when to really use the energy or not the energy, um, when not wasting takes or you know, and all that stuff. But also how I want to be spoken to as an actor, and that every process is different, because some directors come in and think, well, they think this works for everybody, if I just say this. And it's like, no, 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 you gotta watch and listen to them and get to know them enough, uh, how you approach it. So, but it, yeah, I mean, I never wanted to put myself in the movie, because I was doing it so long, I, I wanted to make horrors and thrillers for 10 years now. I did three short films, and now this one. Because I I always love acting, but I, I, it's not what I wanted to do. I didn't want to do half-hour comedies. How was it making the move from short to feature? Was there anything about making a feature instead of a short that's like, wow, that's how that is done in that realm of the industry? Um, yeah, well, it was a big, you know, if I do, let's say the next one, if it's a studio picture or something, it'd be like another level. Yo! How's it going? Good, Sorry. man. How are you? Um, and, um, oh, teasing us with that? Oh, my God. Is this how they do the teas? Except they um, left the toppings. Yeah. Uh, and I was just like, I just knew that I was ready to do it because I wrote it. And I knew that I, as a first time feature director, I had to write it to attach myself to it. Like a friend, a director, a friend of mine told me that. It's like, no one's going to give you the money or to do your first feature. Uh, and you got to write it to make sure you attach yourself to it. So the script was like the champion at first. And then like... Uh, someone told me, oh, it's like a short film, but longer. It, no, not really. It is. The shooting is, but the process is different. There's more money, so there's more pe influences, there's more people you have to navigate more your rules. vision, there's more rules, there's more cut, cutting corners, and you're working with other people that you collaborate with, and you, you have to be, you know, more open to make the best movie possible and all that stuff, so that's a bit, because it's, it's, it's stressful, because you, you, you keep that vision in line, and, uh, and, the, and the editing, is a hell of a lot longer than a short. That's what surprised me. It's like so much longer. 
How is it taking it from script to production and then to the edit? Did it change a lot over that course? A little bit because you know the, the initial script, you know, it, it had the bear attack was intact, pretty almost word word for word, and, and the bear Brad scene was in the fight on the hill. I mean, those things in the ending, her with the canoe and and Brad. I mean, these things are all intact. But then we were looking for other things sometimes. I get influences, you know, I get notes and stuff like that. And as the script, like over th the three years, it changed, you know. And I got Thomas is uh, the producer, he, and, and Jeff too, they had great notes, and they influenced the script for sure. My wife did. Like, I would give it to someone, they would go, you know, like, my, my wife came up with the idea of like, she, since you bring up wintergreen, she should eat it at the end. I was like, oh, fuck, of course. So she brings that up, you know, and then you go, yeah. But then, of course, you get a, the avalanche. So it's about keeping it in the vision. And I think um, even Thomas came up with the idea of her in the tree, you know, and um, I thought that was great too. Um, and it was like my DP, Christian, gave me such a compliment the other day. He was just like, he was like, for the first time working with, with someone where at inception, the, the script breakdown, the vision didn't change from that point to the shooting to the ending until I sat down and saw the theater. It's like it's for the first time. And that meant the world to me because it's it's easy to get go off this way because some people that were involved were like, why isn't this more of like a jump scare kind of movie? And, or because it kind of works, right? But I was like, I want to do something more. Like, it's not that nothing happens. It's that you have to trust the visuals and the sounds and the feeling and the performances that are hard to just put on the page because you can't see it. But I can see it. And then, like, you just hope it, it's going to work. Did you find you got that kind of reaction having been placed in a midnight program? Uh, I think I would have, I don't know, but I think I would have gotten in, like, okay, we're ready for something. We're ready. And then, that's the thing, I think the payoff would have been, they would have loved the payoff. It would have been, okay, they're happy. But I think they would have been, like, come on, like, let's, give me something. But I think another, like, person would appreciate it, like, my hope is that someone goes, I've always wanted to make, the bear shower scene of bear attacks. That was my goal. To make, I really only because I had never seen one that satisfied me. It's a great way to describe it. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to that, give it. I, it's not arrogant to say that. I don't think it's just like why not reach for that, you know? And I really wanted to. And I was so I had years to really shot. I that that whole. It's almost like putting a graphic novel together, you know. I learned that from watching Rob Zombie's uh, making of the Halloween films. Like, when he shot things, I thought it was so smart. And um, so you think you're seeing things, you're not seeing it kind of thing. And, and the camera's aggressive. Like, it's not just the, it's like, you, they, we were like, like, that was how we're like, we, we started the day and blocking it. I go, Christian, like, a little bit like, and then like, when you get here, it's like, he's like, what, what is this? So, so when her hand hits the, the bottom of the tent, the blood comes out, right? He's, he's like, this behind her. It was great. The crew, like, they, they, they made fun of me. How was it working like, in that kind of terrain? <laughs> what? How was it working in that kind of terrain, just in terms of, like, your, I mean, does it affect the kind of camera you could bring out there? I'm not sure how far the actual shooting location was from base camp, but I imagine you can't bring too much out there with you. No, um, not in some places. It was, you know, precarious, like, on top of the waterfall. Like, there was a crew member that just didn't want to go up there because it was really slippery and it was, like, Right at the top, there's just a little ledge. People are like leaning off on the side, and, and, and Christian got tied, like he got strapped up and just, you know, leaning off the cliff, off the tree to get a certain shot. And, 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 and Missy's like harnessed to make sure she doesn't fall down. And it's just like, and I'm standing right on the edge. I'm thinking, this is just a slip. I'm, what am I doing? And then I, when I realized how close I was, I kind of moved back a bit. And people were really like, there was a moment of, okay, we're going there. We're making this very dangerous. Very dangerous, but I was like, God, if you if we're feeling that shooting it, you're gonna feel it something. So that, that was, was my pretty hope. fair. And you like do. Jaws in the ocean, like I'm, I almost sound like a douche comparing that amazing movie, but it's a I mean, it's a masterpiece. But what you what I like to argue is what inspired me to to go deeper into the woods, to go to the hard places. Because some people wanted to just you know why can't we just shoot this in the backyard? You can't, you know. And I had. I totally Thomas is the producer's support. He saw like he, he found a lot of the locations. He was awesome. Like, um, and we went deep. Like, you know, there's no inhibit. Like, 
did no inhibit me from like, oh, get, you have to be closer. And that was awesome. So no cell reception, no nothing. I got to get there by four wheeler. And, and, no cell and, reception sounds like a production nightmare, though. Uh, yeah, sure, absolutely. Because it, it, when then we went to rest duel, there was no there's no cell reception, and I don't know. It's just um, I was it was it was amazing because I had the, I had the support. To what did you shoot on? Uh, the red scarlet. That's pretty mobile. Yeah, it's a little guy. Yeah. He, you know, we ran it for, in for the uh, bear, the live, the real bears, and then the waterfall. We had two. We had a red one and that one. So. What about lighting? Because can you even bring a generator or something out there with you? We did for the night night stuff for sure, but um, having, it, you know, I was so adamant about it being real feeling. And like Derek San Francis movies are a huge influence on me. On that film anyway. Like like the place Beyond the Pines, because you feel like you're there. You feel like you're with them, you know. So the lighting reflects that. So I wanted like I wanted to build them the more you believed them, that like, you know, in the forest it's dark. I can't stand movies that have it looks like oh it's a full moon every night. It's cinema, I get it, but for me, I want to I wanna believe more, you know? So it's like, wow, it's so bright. Their flashlights are dimmer than the backlight. Like, it's just, I don't, I don't get it. But you take a risk, right? Because you know, does, that, does that transcribe to like a, a, a major movie? I don't know. But for this one, it was like, when it's, it's dark in that tent, and it's dark when there's like a sliver just of light that's there. But there's little pots here and there just to give something, because you do see something. So I was just so, because adamant about that to like build that reality. So you go, oh, that, that's what it's really like in a tent. Great. Oh, that's how it would be with my girlfriend if like we got in a fight. Great. If that, oh, that's what it is when we walk like just in the bush. It's quiet and the sound. Great. So when that bear attack happens, I, if I have you believing you're in a real world, you'll believe that bear attack. That's what I, that's what I wanted to do. So the lighting was part of that for sure. And out there, you know, a lot of daylight, so a lot of natural light, so a lot of reflecting and stuff like that. And yeah. How about taking it down into the canoe after? Because now you've got these crazy situations in the woods where it would make me nervous to put a camera in certain places, and then you're putting it in the water. So was that kind of a seamless transition? With those, uh, the GoPro? Did you shoot it on a GoPro? Yeah. Oh. When she tumbles, it was on her heel. A little bit of that, yeah. On the waterfall, yeah. A friend of mine gave me that idea because, like, don't forget, I wrote this five years ago. So GoPros are just coming out; they're getting ready to pop. But he's like, you should. my friend of mine was like, "Cause that's the thing. Like, I believe I'm only as good as the team I work with. Like, if I can have the imagination or I can have the idea, or I always see it. But if people are not on board and they're not feeling it too, I think it's not about facilitating; it's about dreaming it together, and you see it. So, um, with like. Without that support, I'm staring at a blank wall. Do you know what I mean? So when some nuggets come and you're like, oh, that's brilliant. you got to use it. Because, you know, it's a big canvas. So I heard that GoPro thing, and I, some people don't like it, but I think it's, I think it's great because when he jumps in the water, you're like, oh, now we're in the water. Uh, okay, so we're with them. We're really with them on this journey. But really what I was actually gunning for with that is I read another interview you did with uh, Jeff and Missy and the end of the interview was something like, oh, remember the canoe thing? And then you're like, no, interview's over. So like, obviously that's I can't. Uh, you know, there is a story and I, I can't, you know, I, I, they're my friends and I love them both very, very much. And Missy's like a sister to me now for sure. She is my sister. She calls me her brother. Like, and Jeff is my cousin. These people are family. So, but... <laughs> The story. Okay. There's a story, okay. and Jeff's the one that said, This interview's over. <laughs> <laughs> one day you'll care. <laughs> Maybe. I can't. I just. <laughs> and now for the next toughest question, which is kind of inevitable, especially when you make a good first movie. What's but the next what one do you have next? Um, I have. I'm de developing a script called The Wolf at the Door. And. Uh, it's in development, the script is done, it's being shopped around. I mean, that's before kind of like LA opened up a little bit. I, I thought I'd be making another really small Canadian movie, and that's probably what, what I'm going to make Wolf like as well. Um, but there's more options now, so we're seeing, so that's, we'll see. 
Um, I definitely want to make it. Like I'm is fighting it, to make it. Is it the same? Tone yeah, I want to. Yeah, it's it's a trilogy. I want to make a trilogy of women surviving these circumstances, extreme circumstances. Well, you have just sold me. Yeah, it's 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 this time it's, it's a bit different. It's like the way Open Water it was a big like really inspiring me for clearly for backcountry. Dead Calm is another one of my favorite films, and I've never seen like uh, it's such a strong story. But I always wondered like if Billy Zane's character knew them. But they didn't know his motives, and it just kind of unravels in this really strange way. They don't know what's happening, but there is a secret that's revealed in, in, in the story that just changes everything. And it goes from like this, like back in a perfect, serene environment, what you'd think, and it absolutely by the end it's a fucking nightmare for these people. And there is a wolf involved, but it, there is an attack, but <laughs> it doesn't hinge around it. I'm, I'm going to take the risk. I don't know. The bigger question is, is there a koala and is there an ostrich? Or an emu? Or a polar bear? Well, <laughs> they're prima donnas. i got to fly them out from the travel zoo, and they said no. Mm. And there's, a, there's another film I'm, I'm attached to in Los Angeles, um, and one that I'm trying to fight to get that are much bigger films. So that'll be really interesting. It's one I, I wish I could talk about it. It's amazing. And like, I'm, like I'd do anything. Like they hired me to rewrite the script and give it a polish and stuff, and they were happy. And they went, it's out there for distribution now, so we'll see. But I hope we get to make it. I don't know. Maybe. If I do, it's like that would be an amazing follow up. It's um, awesome. And, I, well, I'm and I'm ready because I'm, you know, I'm still a bit insecure for sure because it's my first one. And, kind of think, oh, then I get lucky, and I want, I want to find out, too. I want to go out and do it again and see what, what that is. Otherwise, there's no point. I might just sit, you know, because I want to make movies, so take, you got to take that risk.